Hate water spots? <laughs> yeah, me too. The best way to avoid them is to use deionized water when you rinse your vehicle. Now, there are a few pre-built systems on the market, but are they worth it or should you consider building your own? We're going to answer that question and more, so let's jump in. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. We're going to tackle a few topics, and I've timestamped everything for your convenience. In the first part of the video, we're going to compare pre-built systems available on Amazon to do-it-yourself rigs like you see here. We'll talk about the cost, the effort involved, and the ongoing maintenance. Then we'll dig into the DIY rig and talk about the components I used and how you can put one together yourself. We'll wrap everything up with conclusions and my experience using this system for the last two years. So let's go. Pre-built versus do-it-yourself, ah, the age-old question. Now, there are a few things to consider here. First, do you even have the appetite to take on a project like this, or do you simply prefer to unbox something that's already ready to go? The good news is that putting together a system like this is actually pretty easy, and I would be willing to guess that just about anyone could do it. That being said, yes, it will be a little more work than simply opening a box. Another consideration is convenience. Some pre-built kits use filters instead of loose media, meaning when it comes to replace them, a filter will obviously be a lot quicker and easier, but generally more expensive and likely a more frequent occurrence depending on the size of the DIY system. For example, the build we're gonna see in this video will typically last three times longer than a similar filtered setup. So while I do have to drain it and refill the media, well, I don't have to do it very often. Probably the most interesting aspect to understand is the overall cost and value. So let's take a look at that. I put together this spreadsheet which provides a comparison of two popular ready to go kits and my rig that you'll see in this video. Now we're gonna get a little nerdy here and do some maths, but feel free to skip ahead to the end of the section if you just want the bottom line. Now what I've done here is come up with some calculations. First, estimating how much water I will need. So in my case, I'm planning on a five year life for the system washing my cars seven months out of the year, say two washes per week, and I estimate about 10 gallons of use per wash. Now, I only use the deionized water for the final rinse. That's really the only time it's needed. The other important factor here is the quality of water going into the system. We're gonna tackle this in the next section, but for me, it's about 200 TDS, which is total dissolved solids. Basically, the dirtier the water that goes in, the faster the filters or media will wear out. We can see that I'm gonna use just over 3,000 gallons over five years, taking into account the capacity of each system, again, accounting for the quality of water using my rating chart here, we can quickly estimate the number of times we'll need to refill each setup to meet the demand. Combine that with the base cost of the unit and the cost of ongoing refills, we can estimate the total cost of ownership to run the system over time. What's interesting here is that when I built this system two years ago, the economics were uh, a bit different. The do-it-yourself components have increased in cost like everything else in the world. As you see here, the base cost of this setup in 2023 is just over 600 bucks. So it's a bit more expensive compared to the ready-to-go kits, but you do get a lot more capacity with the increased cost, and we'll go over that next. The bottom line is the costs end up being very similar over time, but as you can see, it's still slightly cheaper in the long run to run a do-it-yourself system. Moving on, let's talk about capacity. The pre-builds I'm comparing here are the CR, DIC20, and the Simple Chuck systems. Going through their spec sheets, I was able to come up with this table of the expected capacity in gallons for the filter size or media capacity of the unit, and compare that to the capacity of my DIY system. The first and most important observation is that my DIY kit holds a lot more resin than either of these two pre-builds. So about 43 pounds compared to 14 and 20 pounds respectively. That simply means I get a lot more life in between refills. It's important to note that water quality has a huge, huge impact on how far these systems will go. Take a look at some of the negative reviews on Amazon. People say, oh, you know, it only lasted two weeks. Well. Yeah, if you're putting nasty water into any filter, it's gonna clog quickly, so be mindful of that. I am on well water, and I'm in New England, which means it's far from perfect. My water is hard and rich in iron and manganese. On my system, I'm running a dual-stage pre-filter to clean up as much as I can, but the takeaway here is the better quality of water you put in, then obviously the longer life you'll get out of the system. The other thing to keep in mind is that you only need to use deionized water for your final rinse. I use filtered water for my buckets and pressure washing and then just switch to the deionized to rinse it off. 
This conserves the amount of water you're going to use with each wash. Now, let's take a look at my DIY build. It's pretty straightforward. All the parts on this build are linked in the description below, and I've included all the core components along with the optional add-ons like the pre-filters. Let's start with the tank and resin. I bought the one cubic foot resin tank, head, and media from Servapure. They have a variety of sizes, so you can easily adjust this to suit your needs. The tank and resin ship separately, but it's actually a pretty easy process to fill the tank. Unfortunately, I don't have video of this because I did it so long ago, but you simply scoop the resin into the tank, fill it to about three quarters, and then you insert the drop pipe down into the tank. You can add a little water to help soften the resin. It'll help the drop pipe sink a little bit easier if it's packed too tight. Then simply install the top, drop the pipe into the head, and screw it on. The chassis here is a 39 inch tall hand truck. I simply use bungee cords to secure it and it works just fine. From here it's simply a matter of running hoses in and out of the system, but I did add a few little quality of life features as well. The pre-filter is mounted to the back of the hand truck. Now it's just a cheap RV kit with two 1 micron filters. This is my first stage of cleaning. You'll notice a couple things here. First, I use quick connects on the inlet and outlet, along with valves to close the system off when it's disconnected and being moved. Otherwise, you'll end up spilling water everywhere. And second, coming out of the filters, I have a splitter. One end runs directly to an expandable hose, which I can just use to do things like pre-rinse, fill my buckets, and run the pressure washer. The other end goes into the DI tank, allowing me to quickly switch between filtered and deionized water. So as you know, washing a car on a sunny day, time is not on your side. So the faster you can work, the better. On the DI side of the system, I have a good quality metal nozzle and flow meter so I can keep track of the gallons being used. This is how I know I use roughly 10 gallons per rinse. Now, as I said, anyone can put this together. Aside from filling the resin tank, you're basically just screwing in hoses. It's really not rocket science. But the question is, is it worth it? Well, as I said, two years ago, the system was actually cheaper to build than it is today. So from a cost perspective, it was absolutely worth it. Today, as we saw, the cost between the pre-builds and building yourself are so close that it really comes down to the other factors mainly the flexibility and capacity of the system. So if you want to incorporate things like pre-filters or simply have a lot more resin in the tank, then building your own will always allow you to get exactly what you want. Otherwise, you may be able to modify other systems and just live with changing media or filters more often. Now, one potential downside of going with a vendor is potential lock-in. So especially if you're using a filtered system, you're only gonna be able to buy filters from that specific vendor. Now, pricing and availability may fluctuate and you're just gonna to have to live with it. At least on a DIY system, as long as you can get resin, then you're good to go. So in the interest of not making this too long, we're gonna wrap it here. But if you have experience with your own DI system or perhaps a pre-built that you think is better, please comment in the comments and let me know. Other than that, I wanna thank you for watching and if you like the video, well, you know what to do.